Crafts Camp Debate Orientation. Today we will be your MCs, Jesse and Seth. Okay, now we will briefly review the rules regarding the AP debate. Now, you guys all learned this in class, yes? Yes! Okay, so let's go over them. Let's start with the first speakers of each team. The Prime Minister first defines the motion and makes one or two arguments. The Leader of the Opposition then rebuts the arguments of the Prime Minister and makes one or two arguments. The Deputy Speakers of both Government and the Opposition rebut to each other and makes additional arguments. The whip speakers of both the op opposition and the government uh, rebut as a whole and then introduces the clashes and explain why their team takes the clash home. Last but not least, the reply speakers summarize the entire debate and explain why they take the debate home. Now let's check if you know the speakers, okay? Now the first speaker is... Prime Minister! And the second speaker is... Leader! The third speaker is... The Deputy Prime Minister! The fourth speaker is... The Deputy Leader of Opposition! The fifth speaker is... Government Whip! The sixth speaker... Opposition Whip! Now this is important. The seventh speaker... Opposition Reply! And the final speaker is... Government Reply! Wow, your debate teachers must be very great, right? Yes! yes. Okay! Now your amazing debate teachers are now going to show you guys a mock debate. However, amongst the teachers, there's going to be villains, okay? Who want to ruin the debate, okay? And now they will be doing things wrong that you should not be doing during any debate, okay? So you've got to listen very carefully. And we are going to ask you some questions about the speakers during the debate. So listen very carefully and write down and take notes at the papers that we gave you. After we ask the question, and for the class who answered the question, we will get one blue sticker. Not for the each students, but at, uh, for the entire class, okay? Okay, now we shall review the motion for today. Now, drum roll please! The motion for 18th House Camp Debate Orientation is... This house believes that Elsa should be part of the Avengers. Now, let me introduce the teams for today. On the government team, our lovely Prime Minister, Christine. Now, the Deputy Prime Minister, Taylor. Our government whip, Ellie. And our government reply, Liz! And I would like to introduce the team opposition. The leader of opposition, Sunny! The deputy leader of opposition, Roni! And the opposition whip, Pepper! Last but not the least, the opposition reply, Shay! Now, let us start the debate. I would first like to invite the Prime Minister to the podium to deliver her speech. Uh, <clears throat> Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The motion for our debate is this house believes that Elsa should be part of the Avengers. Elsa is from a faraway land named Arendelle, and she's the queen of this kingdom in the north. Her sister Anna and she finally made amends to be closer sisters than before. Elsa grew to become open-minded and a fierce woman who does not run away from her problems any longer. The original Avengers are comprised of six members, Iron Man, Hulk, Hawkeye, Captain America, and Black Widow. Each member is flawed and have traumatic memories of either losing loved ones or failing a certain mission to cooperate. These issues at times led to devastation and a longer process to protect the Earth from danger. 
Iron Man and Black Widow died with the Soul Stones, and the deceased must be replaced with new members to regain protection of the Earth. Elsa is suitable for the team for various reasons. I would like to define a few words in the motion. First, Arendelle is under Elsa's rule, and she holds heavy responsibility to protect its borders. For instance, her power has prevented a tsunami from covering the land by freezing an entire wave. She even created a life that has self-acknowledgement. Second, Avengers mean a group of people who take vengeance towards outsiders that threaten the Earth and its civilians. The Earthlings need these heroes who knows what a sacrifice, who knows what sacrifice and courage means. Our team has total of three arguments. First, she is a superhuman. Second, her character of decency and sincerity are necessary in terms of teamwork. She will be calm when decisions are not easily made or when there are conflict between members. With powerful abilities, she will be fit to join the Avengers as the next heroine after Black Widow. As the Prime Minister of the government team, we believe that the statement is true. I'm going to discuss two points and give more details about it. My first point is about Elsa being a superhuman. This means that she is capable of fighting ferocious aliens by freezing them or using ice against them. This is because none of the, none of the members could control ice like Elsa does, and her power is equally strong to the Hulk's super strength and Thor's electric Mjolnir. Freezing enemies or using ice as a defense would be useful on the battlefield. Now that she knows how to control her powers with the concept of love, that is what makes her a Stark warrior. My second point is about Elsa's personality, which helps with the Avengers' peace with each other. The Avengers had always struggled with reconciling before someone intervenes. Considering Elsa's soothing words and a steady character, she can be that person who, st who stops the ongoing conflicts. This is because to be caring and loving is what a hero needs to do what it takes. In other words, Elsa risks her own life to save her loved ones from peril. Thus, with the synergy effect between Elsa and the remaining Avengers is a plant that is good enough to be considered. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, for these reasons, the government team believe that Elsa should join the Avengers. Thank you. Okay. Right, next, I'd like to invite the leader of the opposition to the podium to deliver her speech. Good day, ladies and gentlemen and fellow debaters. We agree with the definition given by the government. But as the LO, we strongly disagree with today's motion. Elsa should not be part of the Avengers. We acknowledge the current status quo that two amazing heroes died, so the Avengers are in need of new member to make them strong again. But even if this is the case, we should carefully think about whether Elsa is really a perfect fit for the Avengers. And also, we believe that even though now she grew to be a stronger woman, her inherent weakness won't go away. These two arguments are going to be very easily washed away by our last two arguments which will be brought up by my lovely DLO later. But let me just shortly touch, and bump, touch upon them. First of all, what is she going to do with her superpower to create eyes? She might hurt enemies with her pointy eyes, but will she really be able to kill aliens and protect citizens from them? I have one question. You said her power might be even stronger than Herx and Thor's, but I highly doubt that. I mean, how can you ensure that? Any evidence? Also, as to her characteristic of being nice and caring, we believe that's not necessarily true. Because what she did until now was only done for the interest of her kingdom and her people. Yes, she saved lots of people, but it was not out of her inherent caring and loving mind, but rather, she had to do so because she was the queen of Arendelle. Just because a mother cares for her children, 
Will she be considered a hero figure? It was, after all, a self-centered or self-interested act. Moving on to our arguments, we have a total of three reasons why Elsa is not the perfect fit for the Avengers. First, Elsa enormously lacks teamwork. Second, she lacks empathy, which is a pivotal characteristic for superheroes. Lastly, Elsa is not strong enough to be part of the Avengers. As the Elro, I will elaborate on the first argument, and last two arguments will be addressed by my lovely Diello. First and foremost, Elsa lacks teamwork. As we've already seen in movie Frozen 1 and 2, being cooperative is the last thing she's capable of doing. No matter what the reasons were, she locked herself up for almost a decade before she finally opened up the gate. Not only that, but whenever there were crises, she chose to do it all by herself rather than getting help from her beloved sister or others. We cannot ignore that this kind of tendency is in her nature, that she shut people out and pushed them out of her boundary, not knowing it might lead to greater harm or danger. It is more than clear that this would serve as the weak spot when Elsa joins the Avengers. Avengers' priority is to save the world from the alien enemies. To do so, the first thing she, they need to do is to build a good team and be cooperative with each other for the common objective. But considering Elsa's nature, it is near impossible. How can you think about even recruiting someone who's mostly like, most likely to shut other Avengers out when they really need to bear one mind? Didn't you see what happened to Elsa in Arendelle when she refused her lovely sister Anna's help in the movie Frozen 2? She almost killed herself, right? And that's what happens to such a person who's inherently co uncooperative. And I have one last question here. Do you really believe that Elsa, Elsa belongs to Avengers? Do you really believe so? Yeah. <laughs> See? Chair. The government team cannot rebut us, and this clearly shows that we take this debate home. Thank you. One blue sticker for Chicago! Now, next, I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to the podium to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Madam Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Deputy Prime Minister of the Government team. Before I state our last argument, I would like to make rebuttals to, the, to what the first speaker has spoken. First, three rebuttals. The capability to kill is not a mandatory condition a superhero should have in common. Elsa's ability to make ice walls and freeze enemies is just enough to protect the citizens from alien attack. Moreover, the first speaker of the opposition team has kept making baseless questions with absolutely no logical steps into it. On the other hand, I stand in front of you all to logically prove why their argument makes no sense at all and ours do. The leader of the opposition team has tried to tell you that Elsa is not cooperative so she would not fit in the team. And without her little sister Anna, she isn't capable of doing anything. However, this house strongly believes that this argument is no longer valid. Because A, although she tends to be a little independent in the beginning, Elsa has learned her lesson that cooperation and teamwork is important and crucial throughout the many experiences she had in the movie Frozen 1 and 2. In the movie, for example, in the movie Frozen 2, although Elsa sent Anna and Olaf away on an ice canoe, she soon realized that it was beyond her capability to solve, it, solve the whole problem on her own. That's exactly why Elsa asked Anna to rope in the rock giants to the bridge and B, her magical power, which is controlling snow and ice, would give great help to the team where such power is absent. Besides, as the prime minister of our team has mentioned, with the loss of some vital members such as Iron Man and Black Widow, the superior ability that Elsa possesses which should be prioritized over her characteristics and personality. Now, 
to elaborate the last argument of our team. We need Elsa for the positive reputation of the Avengers. Because Elsa is well known for her caring and loving tendency, it will neutralize the destructive image that the Avengers had for once. When the Avengers were saving the world in the New York attack, there was a lot of damage to both public and private poverty, property. Such happenings once even formed hatred towards the Avengers among citizens. By putting Elsa into the team, it will bring a brand new image to the whole Avengers team. Elsa not only possesses positive reputation, but also holds great popularity to young age groups. So by adopting Elsa into the team, we can, explain, we can expand support from citizens all over the world. Not only she would be a famous role model to little kids, but also this would also result in the increase of investment, which will contribute to solving any financial difficulties that the Avengers would face in the future. Moreover, adding on to our first argument, even though we bite the bullet and say Elsa's image nor her non-physical factors that she holds are not suitable for the team, the magical power Elsa possesses will do far more good than harm. For instance, her power can solve problems that other members can't, such as global warming and climate change, by freezing the glaciers. Like, the, like this, not all crises that endanger mankind are external and destructive. This house believes Elsa will be the most optimal superhero who will fulfill the shortage in Avengers. So, Mr. and Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, for these reasons, we, the government team, strongly believe that this statement is true, and we are proud to take the um, debate home. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, next I'd like to invite the Deputy Leader of the Opposition to the podium to deliver her speech. Good evening, Honourable Judicators. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Deputy Leader of Opposition, Roni. Before I move on to my arguments, I would like to make a rebuttal to the previous speaker. We just heard that grey-headed, know-it-all, Prime Minister blab about how he thinks that Elsa should be included as part of the Avengers. But don't trust anything that he says. I mean, okay, look at him. He has grey hair. <laughs> How can we sit, trust anything such a gray person says? I mean, I think he's about 100 years old. <laughs> Therefore, their argument about bringing a positive impact to the team is false. Anyways, the government side has said that Elsa is a caring and loving person who is fit for the superhero job. However, we, the opposition, think otherwise. Elsa is in fact an apathetic person who lacks empathy. To clarify, our opposition team's second argument is that Elsa is incapable of saving other people because she cannot sympathize with the pains and worries of other people. There are two evidences that support this claim. First, Elsa does not know how to love. In the Avengers, all the superheroes either have a family with a wife and husband or have their own love interests, such as boyfriends or girlfriends or even a secret crush. For example, Iron Man's wife is Pepper, and Captain America's lover is Peggy, Thor's lover is Jane, and Star-Lord Quill's crush and flirt is Gamora, and Spider-Man's lover is MJ. Every superhero shows such compassion and love for people around them, but Elsa, Elsa, well, she fails to show such emotion. In the beginning of Frozen 1, Elsa closes herself off from the rest of the townspeople in Arendelle, and even from her own sister, Anna. Do you guys remember when she sang, Do you wanna build a snowman? But even after years and years of begging her sister to play, Elsa never accepts Anna's pleas. And, uh, and Elsa never has a man she falls in love with either. Somehow, Elsa seems different from the other humane superheroes who are full of love. We can even say that Elsa might become the next Thanos. Thanos, he believed he was killing half of the population for the greater good. 
He even pushed his daughter, Gamora, off of the cliff to attain power. Elsa could easily become the same cold-hearted, powerful villain because of her inability to sympathize. Therefore, she should not be allowed any greater power by being included as the Avengers. I mean, I'm sure the government team, they won't understand what I'm saying because look at him. He probably never even dated anybody before. <laughs> Who likes people with gray hair? Do you want to date grandpa? And plus, everything that gray-haired people say is not very trustworthy because look at his age. <laughs> Our third and last argument is that Elsa's power is not strong enough to be included into the Avengers. The Avengers are supposed to be superheroes who fight the invading aliens and evil forces with their powers. We see the superheroes and heroines of Avengers shoot, slash, and bash, and easily kill those invaders with their powers. But what can Elsa do? Okay, throw icicles, make snowmans, and sing Let It Go? <laughs> she doesn't belong in the Avengers any more than that gray-headed old man does. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, don't listen to another word that these unsavvy group of people are saying. The previous speaker is probably an otaku grandpa <laughs> who has a bad hairstyle. That is why we, the opposition, take this debate home. Thank you. Now next, I call upon the government whip to the podium to deliver her speech. Good afternoon, Mr. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I am the third speaker from the government team. We, the government team, believe that this statement is true. I would like to make few rebuttals for the issue that cannot be included in the clash. The opposition team talked about Elsa being very weak and that she needs Anna all the time, but in fact, Elsa is very strong. We believe that she is strong enough to be one of the members in the Avengers team. There are two reasons for this. First, she can build an army of ice, such as strong Olaf, to win the war. This could increase the power for the Avengers team, as Olaf can outnumber the villains. This, therefore, could be an advantage for the Avengers team both in quantity and quality. Second, not only Elsa, but also other members like Iron Man in the Avengers team have traumas too. Elsa is actually the only one that has overcame her trauma with love. She, can, she understands the importance of her love and is now able to control her freezing power. She can freeze and unfreeze things with ice anytime she wants with the experience she had from the past. Also, if she really needs Anna's help, then Anna can join in the team to save the Earth, in the team to save the Earth, just like what Pepper did for the Iron Man. This is not that big of a deal, as saving the Earth is more important. For the second point, she does not like empathy. She's a loving and caring character as she had learned that love is the answer for everything from the past. From Frozen 1, Elsa has saved Anna with love. She realized the love relationship between sister were the answers of the Frozen magic. Since she knows the importance of love, Elsa can take care of the troubles and make peace inside the Avengers with a caring heart just like what Black Widow did in the animation. Next, let me move on to the clashes of today's debate. I have found two clashes on this honorable debate. First, Elsa's superpower, and second, Elsa's characteristic and personality. The first clash was about her ability to be suitable in the Avengers team. To further explain, we believe that she is capable of being a member in the Avengers team as she can free as she can freeze and unfreeze anything, anytime she wants. 
This is the new ability that does not exist in the previous Avengers team. So, therefore, this could be a very strong advantage for them. In addition, Elsa can create armies of ice to support the member and finally win the war to save the Earth. The second clash was about her characters, whether she's a loving and caring character or not. However, we believe that she is a really loving person as she, she has realized that love is the most important factor of all through her past experience. With the lack of love and caring present in the Avengers team, we believe that Elsa is the only answer for the harmony in the Avengers team. So, Mr. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, for these specific reasons, we, the government team, firmly believe that we should take this debate home. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Wood. Hey, next, I would like to invite the opposition whip to the podium to deliver her speech. Ladies and gentlemen, today we saw an irresponsible governor who wants to make an ice version famous as the Avengers. But as a responsible opposition, I, as the opposition whip, would prove how we brought this debate home by pointing out the main clashes. First, whether Elsa has enough power to become Avengers, and second, on whether her personality is proper as a superhero, and lastly, the harms and benefits of having Elsa as a part of the Avengers. Going on to my first clash, we the opposition believe that Elsa is too weak compared to other Avengers members, whereas current Avengers members like Thor, Hulk, and Captain America have amazingly strong superpowers the government apparently seems to believe that ice power could somehow defeat aliens and supervillains. However, we told you how her powers are not suitable for killing and her traumas make her feel, fear her own powers. How is someone afraid of their own power attack other people? Also, if Anna is not there, Elsa would probably have a mental breakdown. Oh. And her biggest weakness is that she is a terrible singer. Let it go could have been much better if Iron Man sang it. Really? <laughs> Anyways, Elsa is a powerless and dependent. Next is on Anna's uh, on Elsa's improper personality. Our deputy leader of opposition told you how Elsa has absolutely no love affairs. This means that she lacks empathy which is necessary for a superhero since a superhero must save those in need. You see, lack of emotion spoils the song. Her singing skills seem to have even more worsened in Frozen 2. How is that even possible? The government argued that she is loving and caring. However, this is not only a misinterpretation of her character, but also those were actually all for her own kingdom, too. Therefore, the government side is cherry-picking her action to argue that Elsa is nice when actually she is not. <coughs> Lastly, we the opposition believe that having Elsa as Avengers does more harm than good. The government failed to show how such a cold and selfish character is actually going to make the Avengers image better. People would think of Avengers as a group of the worst singers in the, in the world, and that's a terrible image. On the other hand, our Prime Minister clearly pointed out her Elsa's introvert character. Elsa would put the Avengers spirits down because she lacks cooperation. Therefore, we take this clash home too. In conclusion, I have showed you how Elsa is a powerless 
and apathetic character, which all goes down to Elsa being a terrible singer. She would only harm the Avengers' image and teamwork, so in the end, Elsa would break down the Avengers team from both the inside and the outside. Taking all three clashes home, we strongly oppose to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, opposition. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow debaters. As the last speaker of the opposition team, I would like to say that we remain proud to stand against the motion. We strongly believe that Elsa should not be part of the Avengers team. Let us briefly summarize today's debate. The first clash of today's debate was Elsa's power. Is Elsa powerful enough to join the Avengers? At this point, we, the government decides that she is powerful because she can control ice and freeze others. But what we should focus on is whether she has an ability to beat others not an environmental adjustment or a climate change. And we, the opposition team, proved that Elsa is not powerful enough to be an Avengers member by comparing her power with other Avengers members. The second clash point was her personality and character. Does Elsa's character fit in with the Avengers team? The government side argued that Elsa's personality is loving and caring, but it's highly doubtful. How on earth can a loving and caring person like Elsa leave her own kingdom's people that easily and irresponsibly? Also, you should remember Anna's desperate call. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Anna knocked her only sister's door over and over. However, for years, Elsa's answer was not yes, not no, but a mere silence. Lastly, I want to add another point because the second and third argument of the government side is inconsistent with their own definition of the Avengers. They said the Avengers is a group of people who take vengeance towards horrible outsiders. So they should have enough power and have enough will to will their power. But the government side mentioned Elsa should join the Avengers because she is loving and caring. But fellow audiences, how can a person is loving and caring and at the same time have a determined will to kill the enemies? That simply doesn't make sense. And on the other hand, people can be afraid of the fact that some members of the Avengers are too moderate to protect the Earth. In the Marvel movie, Thor 1, when Odin banished Thor to Earth, he whispered to Thor's hammer, Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. That this statement exactly represents our team's position. Only the one who is strong enough, only the one who is cooperative enough, and only the one who is worthy enough to take the responsibility of saving people and the Earth shall be included in the Avengers. And we just confirmed that Elsa is not capable enough through this debate. Therefore, the motion falls. Thank you. Now, finally, I'd like to invite the government reply to the podium to deliver her speech. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow debaters. I am the reply speaker of the government team. We, the government team, are for the motion. Let us briefly summarize the debate as a whole. Our motion was that this house believes that Elsa should be part of the Avengers. The government side has given three arguments, with the opposition setting forth three arguments. The government team stated that first, Elsa is any teachers or mentors. 어떠한 선생님도, 뭐 에세이 선생님, 크레버 선생님, 필름 선생님, 어떠한 선생님한테도 질문을 하면 안 됩니다. 그리고 여러분 기숙사에 오시는 멘토 선생님 있죠? 그 선생님한테도 질문을 절대 하면 안 됩니다. 만약에 궁금한 게 있다. 그러면은 only to your debate teachers. 꼭 디베이터 선생님한테만 질문을 해주세요. 물론 대답을 해드린다는 보장은 없어요. 그래도 질문이 있으면 해주세요. Next. 
Teams must be prepared to argue for both the government and the opposition. 찬성 팀과 반대 팀 모두 준비하고 있죠? 네, 둘다 준비하시면 됩니다. 찬성 팀과 반대 팀은 토론 시작하기 5분 전에, 5분 전에 뽑습니다. Last but not the least, debaters may use homeroom time but should not discuss in counseling time. 지금까지 그러고 있죠? 홈룸 시간에는 담임 선생님 허락하에 같이 의논을 하고 있고 카운슬링 시간에서는 셀프 스터디 하고 있는 거 맞죠? 네 알겠습니다. 어 그러면 지금까지 진행된 내용 외에 혹시 디베이트 컴퓨티션 뭐 프리리미너리 라운드 또는 아니면 본선까지 질문 있는 사람한테 질문 받도록 할게요. 뒤에서부터 네? 뭐예요? 질문이 뭐예요? 경쟁자는 어떻게 뽑나요? 경쟁자는 대회 당일 날 공개됩니다. 네? 만약 본선까지 간다면 혹시 본선 진출이 수업에 영향을 미치나요? 혹시 본선까지 간다면 본선 진출이 수업에 영향을 미치나요? 그렇지 않습니다. 본선 진출자는 정규 수업과 관계 없는 시간에 모여서 준비를 하기 때문에 지장이 가지 않습니다. 네. 왜 이렇게 준비 시간이 짧나요? 원래 토론에서 준비 시간은 30분 드립니다. 그런데 지금 며칠 주고 있죠? 목요일? 금요일? 토요일? 3일인데? 충분히 하실 수 있습니다. 8강, 4강 결승 올라가면서 주제가 바뀌나요? 네, 모든 라운드는 주제가 다릅니다. 8강, 4강 결승 올라가면 똑같이 3일 전에 주제가 발표되나요? 그 본선에서는 매 라운드마다 스케줄이 조금씩 조금씩 변동이 있긴 한데 보통 한 2, 3일 전에 주어진다고 알고 있으면 됩니다. 본선 진출자 숫자는 어떻게 되나요? 어, 본선 진출자는 32명입니다. 본선에 올라가게 되면 3명으로 된 팀이 있나요? 아니요. 본선 진출자는 모두 4명으로 이루어져 있습니다. 한 팀에 4명. 네. 본선 올라가면 팀이 바뀌나요? <웃음> 네. 예선전과 본선 진출자들은 팀이 달라집니다. 예선전에는 모두가 참여하죠. 근데 본선에서는 본선 진출자만 참여를 하기 때문에 본선 진출자 내에서 4명으로 이루어진 한 팀을 만듭니다. 그리고 그 팀은 결승까지 끝까지 가게 됩니다. 본선 진출자는 개인 점수로 결정이 되나요? 예선, 예선전에서 치러진 자신의 개인 점수 그리고 수업 참여도 수업에서의 토론 점수가 포함이 되지만 개인 점수 토, 어떻게 토론해서 guys, debate our team or debate as a team or grade? 팀워크죠. 근데 개인만 잘한다고 개인 점수가 높을 수 있을까요? 다른 친구들도 도와주고 같이 협동하는 그런 게 필요하겠죠? 네. 본선 진출자들은 팀이 어떻게 꾸려지나요? 랜덤 네. 만약에 본선 진출을 하였는데 팀이 다른 반 아이와 꾸려진다면 어떻게 준비를 하나요? 모든 본선 진출자들은 그 라운드를 준비할 수 있는 시간을 따로 드리기 때문에 그때 모여서 하시면 됩니다. 네. A, B, C, D, E, F 모션이 있는데 어, 그러면 A는 A끼리 B는 B끼리 만나서 토론을 하는 건가요? 
아무래도 그렇겠죠? 다른 모션으로 토론을 할 수는 없으니까 어, 혹시 뒤쪽에서 더 얘기하고 싶은 저쪽에 상이 있나요? 본선 진출자부터는 상이 나오는 걸로 알고 있습니다. 본선 진출자는 이 각관에 한 명인가요? 영 명일 수도 있습니다. 예선에, 예선전에서의 채점 기준이 궁금합니다. 예선전에서 채점 기준은 그 방에 들어가서 채점하시는 심사위원에 따라 조금씩 다르겠죠? 그렇지만 뭐 크게 여러분들 수업 시간에 받는 피드백이라고 생각을 하시면 될것 같습니다. 위에 더 없죠? 저희 팀이 세 명인데 저희가 만나는 팀은 무조건 세, 세 명인 팀인가요? 아니요 그렇지 않습니다. 상관없이 모든 팀은 It is composed of four speakers, right? So it doesn't matter. 자 다음 위 없죠? 네. 아, 심사위원들은 어떤 선생님들로 구성이 되어 있나요? 예선전은 저희 디베이트 선생님들 열 분과 그리고 다른 강사 선생님들까지 조금 포함됩니다. 네. 본선전과 예선전의 심사위원이 달라지나요? 예선에서는 한 분의 선생님만 심사를 하시지만 본선에 올라가면 은 여러, 여러 분들로 늘어납니다. 8강에서는 뭐 2분, 그 다음 4강에서는 뭐 5분 이런 식으로 나중에 결승전은 저희 모두 10명에서 심사를 하게 됩니다. 혹시 본선에 올라갔는데 개인 사정으로 거기에 참여하지 못하면 어떻게 처리가 되나요? 일단 개인 사정 관련해서 저희가 모두 공지를 받았고 그것을 바탕으로 본선 진출자를 뽑을 거기 때문에 크게 걱정하지 않으셔도 됩니다. 앞쪽으로 넘어와도 될까요? 이제 뒤에 질문 없죠? 네, 앞으로 갈게요. 자, 앞에 질문. 네. 본선 또는 예선에 팀이 결정이 되었는데 제 룸메이트가 제 팀원이면 어떡하나요? 굉장히 운이 좋으신 겁니다. 하지만 크게 떠들면 안 되겠죠? 기숙사에서는 기숙사 규칙을 꼭 지키는 걸로. 저희 팀이 졌는데 개인이 잘해서 올라갈 수 있고 저희 팀이 이겼는데 개인이 못해서 떨어질 수도 있는 건가요? 예선전은 승패가 결정되지 않습니다. 그렇기 때문에 상관없을 것 같습니다. 맡은 역할에 따른 가산점이 있나요? 모든 스피커는 동일하게 중요하기 때문에 그런 건 없습니다. 네. 우승 여부에 따라서 올라갈 확률이 있는 것도 있는가요? 승패가 결정되지 않습니다. 예선전에서는? 네, 예선전에서는. 본선에서는 8강부터는 토너먼트 식으로 이긴 팀은 진출, 진 팀은 탈락. 
3명인 팀은 한 사람이 두 사람의 역할을 해야 하는데 그 사람에게 가산점이 주어지나요? 아니요, 그렇지 않습니다. 개인 사정 때문에 안 되는 사람들은 아예 그런 본선 진출이 불가능한 건가요? 예를 들어서 조기 퇴소를 해서 본선 스케줄을 진행하지 못한다거나 그런 개인 사정을 얘기한 거였고 그것 외에 뭐 그것 외에는 무관할 것 같습니다. 이미 예정돼 있는 뭐큰 일이라던가 내가 일찍 나가야 된다. 그래서 결승전에 참가를 못한다는 예정이 이미 확신이 되어 있으면 예선전에서 통과하기는 조금 힘들겠죠. 그래도 인클래스 디베이트가 엄청 많이 준비되어 있기 때문에 모두 토론에서 적극적으로 꼭 참여해 주시길 바랍니다. 네. 얘들아. 예선전에서 제대로 참여하지 않으면 레드 스티커를 주나요? 그렇게 불성실한 학생이 우리 캠프에 있나요? 없는 것 같은데? 네. 당연히 불성실하면 주겠죠? 근데 그런 학생 없겠죠? 선전에서 탈락한 나머지 인원들은 8강, 4강 결승을 시청하지 못하나요? 8강과, 8강과 4강은 공개되지 않지만 결승은 모든 학생들이 보는 앞에서 하게 됩니다. 자 얘들아 다같이 우리 입 잡아볼까? 네. 몇 등까지? 뭘몇 등까지? 토론 순위를 몇 등까지 뽑냐고요? 토론 순위를 몇 등까지 뽑나요? 는 그냥 아까 저희가 32명을 뽑는다고 했죠? 네. 6학년은 6학년끼리, 중학생은 중학생끼리 이렇게 끼리끼리 배치가 되나요? 초등부는 초등부끼리, 중등부는 중등부끼리 하게 됩니다. 한 반에서 세 명도 될수 있을까요? 정말 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 어쩔 수 없다면 그럴 수도 있겠죠? 한, 한 반에서 몇 명이 뽑히는지는 정해지지 않았습니다. 네, 그냥 그건 순수히 순순히 그 네. 스피커 점수에 따라서. 네. 초등부하고 중등부하고 나누면 그렇다면 초 5, 초 6이 같이 배정이 되나요? 같은 팀의 본선에서는 배정될 수 있습니다. 자 이제 질문 마지막 질문 받고 마치도록 할게요. 마지막 질문 두 개만 받고. 네, 먼저 실질적으로 팀 전체가 아규먼트를 만들어서 구성하는데 스피커 중에서는 더 강력하게 아규먼트를 주장하는 예를 들면 첫 번째 스피커가 있는데 그렇다면 논리 점수가 그첫 번째 스피커에게 더 주어지나요? 저희가 그런 거는 모두 고려하고 있습니다. 네. 자, 잠깐만요. 앞으로 한번 갈게요. 네, 앞에 친구들이 질문을 못해서 앞에 친구들한테만 질문 받고 다른 궁금한 거 있는 친구들은 각자 디베이트 선생님께 여쭤보세요. 여기 앞에. 앞에. 네. 초 5, 6 중에 서는 두 명인 건가요? 네, 우선은 그렇게 알고 있습니다. 네. 
팀 점수가 영향을 많이 받으시나요? 팀 점수라고 생각하지 말고 약간 예선점 점수라는 개념으로 생각하면 이해하기 쉬울 것 같습니다. 앞에 네 마지막 질문 받고 끝낼게요. 대회마다 몇 명씩 떨어지나요? 그건 무슨 질문인가요? <웃음> 얘들아 입점을 했는데 누가 얘기하지? 질문 없나요 그러면? 